Hi, I'm Dr. David Geyer, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine expert. In this episode of That's Gotta Hurt, I'm going to talk about the new NFL targeting rule, and I'm going to do it while doing some blood flow restriction training. That's right, lifting weights with tourniquets on my arms. Let's go. blood flow restriction. Basically, I'm gonna be lifting weights while wearing tourniquets on my arms. You may wonder, why would you wanna restrict blood flow to your arms if you're doing bicep and tricep exercises? And you can do it for your legs. And again, you might think, well, why would I restrict blood flow to my legs when I'm trying to work my quads and hamstrings? It's not as crazy as it sounds. It's being used for physical therapy, rehab after ACL surgeries, and after total knee replacements. There is some science behind it, but it's really popular in the bodybuilding world. And the thought is that it actually helps to build up some of the signals, the cellular components that help our muscles grow by basically creating a tourniquet that prevents the lactic acid and some of the other byproducts of lifting weights that accumulate in the blood and it stays down there by the muscle, in theory, it helps them grow. I've also heard, and some of my friends that have tried this tell me, that using blood flow restriction can actually help boost your growth hormone levels. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but it's an interesting thing to try. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my normal workout, and then I'm going to do some bicep and tricep exercises and forearm exercises. My understanding is you're basically supposed to do it like this. I think the maximum time that you can do is about eight minutes, probably because it gets really uncomfortable and that's not good for you. You basically do four sets of each exercise in that time. You do one uh, where you really, really drop the weight and do a set of 30. 30, then you do three more sets doing sets of 15 so you increase the weight a little bit but you're dropping the weight way under what you would normally do and focusing on repetitions supposedly that's got the best success we'll see how this goes So these are the tourniquets. They're already pretty uncomfortable. Start with biceps curls, set at 30. Biceps, uh, uh, extensions, set of 30. Already starting to feel a little bit of burn. So I want to talk about this week, the new targeting rule in the NFL. There's been a lot of confusion leading into it. I think a lot of this stems from the Ryan Shazier injury when he lowered his head, had a very serious injury. So the NFL wants to get some of, some of that out of the game. It makes perfect sense. Now it's set of 15. This is already hurting. I think the challenge comes is what the rule actually means. If you read the rule, it basically says the lowering of the head to make contact with an opponent. It doesn't say intentional, and it doesn't necessarily say that you have to hit them in the head. It's not a targeting rule per se. You could hit their knee, you could hit their uh, 
hip, you could hit their shoulder. It's burned. And I think that's led to a lot of the confusion. It's not necessarily targeting a player by hitting them in the helmet. It's you know hitting them anywhere, but by lowering the head. And I think that's one of the sources of confusion is, you know, what if you lower your head to protect yourself? You know, you go in with your shoulder, but your head drops a little bit. Is that a 15 yard penalty? And I think if you talk to some of the defenders in the league, they don't know. I mean, in the Hall of Fame game the other night, there were four penalties called. Two or maybe three of those, you could argue, wouldn't have been penalties under the normal rule. Philadelphia Eagles players had a meeting with NFL officials to figure out how this was going to be called. Is it just going to be for intentionally lowering the head? Is it going to be just when you lower the head, you hit another player's head? And there was all kinds of confusion. Apparently they showed video of Brandon Cooks being knocked out of the Super Bowl and the officials there, some thought that it was a penalty under the new rules, some didn't. So there's a lot of confusion. Richard Sherman, always outspoken, says that because of this, this is going to lead to a lot more lower extremity injuries. Guys basically aiming for the lower body in an attempt to avoid a penalty. Ah, this burns so much. I mean, 20 pounds of dumbbells are nothing. But when no blood's going to your fingers, no blood's going to your arms, you definitely feel it. And so I think that's where a lot of the challenge comes from. It's not even necessarily defensive players. What if a running back or wide receiver or quarterback goes to protect themselves a little bit and drops their helmet and then that's what actually makes contact with the defender? Is that going to be a penalty? And what about the collision between linemen at the beginning of every play? I mean, a lot of the times those are helmets coming together. This could be as ambiguous as that controversial NFL catch rule. This could be as controversial as holding, which could be called basically on every single play. I think this could be really challenging, differentiating between intentional and non-intentional contact. And again, the rule doesn't state that that is something that we need to stipulate. So maybe we're going to see lots of these penalties called in preseason while the officials try to work it out, and then we'll see less of these called in the regular season. But by the letter of the law, we're going to see these called many, many times a game. And that'll be 15-yard penalties plus a first down if it's a defensive player. We may see players getting ejected. This is really starting to get uncomfortable. Now I will say that I applaud the NFL's attempts to make the game safer. Yes, this is going to be clunky. Yes, it's going to have some implementation rules or challenges. But I think any chance to make the game safer, 14, 15, oh, I think is definitely a good thing. We've got to get the head out of football. And I think that this is a good step. I don't think it's going to be the end if we truly want to make it safer. I think you're going to have to look at you know, challenges like eliminating the three-point stance, stance at a certain point, where basically you start at a crouched position as opposed to down, so you have less contact with the helmet. But I think that these are necessary changes we need to make if we're going to keep football as safe as possible, which may not be all that possible. But I think if it saves the futures of players down the road, that's certainly a good thing. Four arm exercises with the targets, and then we're going to be done because this really hurts. Oh, all right, that is it. Let's see if I can get these things off now. Uh, I cannot tell you, it's not the most pleasant experience ever. All right, so that's gonna wrap up 
this week's video, this week's challenge. If you have thoughts on the new NFL targeting rule, should it be changed? Should it be scrapped altogether? How can we make the implementation better? Is it gonna change football forever? Will it make the game safer? Leave those in the comments below. If you have thoughts on blood flow restriction training, better ways to do it, you know, tips and tricks, I'm just learning from this, so let me know that as well. Leave those in the comments. And if you have other challenges that you want me to try, different sports, different exercise, uh, different recovery treatments, different injury recovery methods, leave those in the comments below. I'll try to do those on an upcoming That's Gotta Hurt. Remember to subscribe so you get these videos directly to you, and I'll see you right here next time.